Okay, so this is going to be a bit of a um, video that is to show how to go ahead and provision the CC3220 mod ASF dev board from TI. Uh, so I have the board here, and I've already gone ahead and I've flashed this board with a different piece of software that I'm looking to flash it with. So my goal here is to flash this board with the out-of-the-box software that would come with this board initially. So um, right now it's unplugged, and you can see that through this uh, UniFlash software that TI provides. It says that there are no detected devices. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, USB cable from the mod ASF board, and we're going to plug that into our computer. And just like that, we get a device being recognized in UniFlash. And I have a terminal window here that is connected to that USB port, and it says connected now, whereas before it said disconnected. Now, if I press the top, you can see all of the uh, LEDs are on. So if I press the top button up here, it will restart the board. And when I do that, you'll notice that the application starts to run in the terminal. So uh, when I'm doing this whole provisioning process and flashing process, I like to have a terminal window open just so I can see that communication is actually happening properly. Um, let's see, what should I note here? Okay, so I think we're ready. So you'll see that the UniFlash software has recognized the CC3220SF launchpad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click Start, and it's going to start the image creator process. Um, and I have a few recent projects here already. Um, the one that we're actually gonna be using is this OOBSF free RTOS project, but I'm gonna show you how to do that yourself. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click Manage Projects, and we're going to do import project from zip file. And so if we click that, you're going to want to go to the location where you downloaded the simple link CC3220 SDK. So for me, that's in my applications folder under TI and uh, inside of simple link underscore CC32XX SDK. And you go into examples, RTOS, choose the launch pad that you're working with. In my case, uh, my board is the SF version of the CC3220. So I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to click Demos, out of the box, and scroll down until you see UniFlash, and then I'm going to choose the RTOS zip file. So this is sort of a pre-packaged, pre pre-put-together project for us, just so we can get up and running. Uh, we click Open. Uh, and in this case, it's saying that I've already created this project, um, which is fine. So I have that here. So once you've done that import process, a new project will appear here. If you double click this and you go to settings, you will see this uh, MAC address here. Now, uh, in mo most cases, this MAC address won't actually match the MAC address that your CC3220 is running on or has. Um, and that's okay. So what you're going to want to do is then click uh, connect. And you may see this warning here saying that the resource is busy. And that's talking about the fact that we have a terminal window that's connected to this device already. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from this uh, device in our terminal window. It shows disconnected. I'm going to click close here and reconnect. And at this point, uh, we should just wait a few seconds and uh, the connecting will work. And you can see that it, you're connected by this device status saying connected on and um, all of this other information appearing for your board. Um, so at this point, we are ready to uh, program or flash, generate an image of our uh, off, out of the box program. So we're going to click generate image down here. Uh, we can first save the project. We're going to click Generate Image, and then we're going to click Program Image Create and Program. And so when we do this, uh, this can take a few few seconds. Um, in some cases, you may get a timeout uh, where maybe your board wasn't responding or something like that. So if that's the case, just uh, close UniFlash down and unplug your board, plug it in, and start the process again. Uh, you should just be able to open up the project that you had already imported and go from there. Um, for some reason, there's just some communication issues that might happen with your board. Um, like I said, this, this process can take uh, maybe a minute or two, so um, that's not a huge issue. 
Uh, once this starting disappears, we should see a progress bar showing that the flashing and uh, programming is taking place. So that's right here. And so we'll wait for this to complete. In the meantime, on an iOS or Android device, you're going to want to download this application, the Simple Link Starter Pro app. Uh, so if we click on this and open it, this is the main provisioning page of the uh, of this application. You can see that I'm connected to my home personal Wi-Fi, uh, and I'm connected to the same Wi-Fi on my computer. Um, and really, that's not necessary. Your computer doesn't need to have internet access while you're doing this programming and provisioning, uh, but it, it definitely doesn't hurt. Um, when we do provisioning, what you're doing is essentially providing the CC3220 with the Wi-Fi login information for your access point. So uh, my Wi-Fi is not unsecured, so it does have a password, and you have to allow the CC3220 to have information about that password. Um, so this 99% here may last for a few seconds. That's always happened to me. It always takes a few seconds to get up to a 100%. Um, and so once that's done, we will start the provisioning process. So uh, something to note is if you go to the settings tab, you're going to want to have this enable smart config turned off at the very top up there, up here. And um, when this is on, I've had some really big difficulties getting um, the device to be prov provisioned properly. Uh, in some cases, um, it just will come back and say that something failed but not provide much information. And I was able to track it down to being this setting needs to be turned off. Uh, and so back in the UniFlash software, we see that the programming is complete, so we click Close. And at that point, the uh, CC3220 is ready to be provisioned. And you can tell that's the case by um, this tricolor uh, LED flashing different colors. That's something that is specific to the out-of-the-box software, so uh, if you're programming the board with some other piece of software, that might not necessarily happen, uh, which is fun. Um, okay. So now what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to open up the terminal and press connect so that way we can get uh, communication from the board to our computer. Uh, and again, I'm going to restart the board by pressing and releasing the reset button up by the USB connection. And you'll see here um, that some information pops up about the board. And what we're waiting for is for this message to appear. Provisioning started, waiting to be provisioned. And that means that our uh, communication to our iOS device or Android device is now ready to get started. So we're going to go to the provisioning tab and we're going to click on search for your device. And uh, this is going to ask us to go to our Wi-Fi and choose my simple link. So if we do that, if we go to settings, Wi-Fi, and um, choose the My Simple Link Wi-Fi, which should appear here. Uh, let's see, give it a few seconds. Sometimes it takes a bit. Let's see. Here it is. So My Simple Link 8, 8BD1B5. And those last six digits are actually the last six digits of the um, MAC address from our uh, settings menu here. So 8BD1B5, that's the same here. So I'm going to click this Wi-Fi and uh, my phone connects to that. And so I go back to the app. What I did was I connected to my simple link, the Wi-Fi uh, access point that appears in my Wi-Fi list. Then I went back to the configuration page and I clicked on the device to configure here and uh, it auto-populated with this information. Um, so at this point, I could name the board something if I wanted to. So I could name this uh, CC32220, um, maybe dash OOB for out of box. Um, and I'm going to click on search for your router. So at this point, a window should appear that is asking for my Wi-Fi um, access point. So that's Kent Wi-Fi. And um, if I choose that and I click security key, I will enter in the security key for this uh, Wi-Fi access point, which at this point is my, my name, Shane Kent. So press OK, and uh, you enter in your network password here as well, 
and um, press Start Configuration. Now at this point, it says Adding Profile, and you'll see that the terminal window now says Profile Added as well, and that uh, there's been a connection to the access point and that an IP address has been acquired. So uh, we're going to wait for the configurations to be done, and it says that provisioning is successful. So if we press OK there, you'll notice that the terminal window lists out the IP address that we should connect to. So in that case, it's 192.168.1.27. So if we open up a window and we go to 192.168.1.27, the out-of-the-box uh, Gen 2 software window will pop up. We can press Start, and when we do that, the terminal window will start displaying a lot of information because our browser on this computer is talking wirelessly to the CC3220 board to get the accelerometer data from the accelerometer that's on this board. And so as I move the board, you can see that these X, Y, and Z values are changing respectively. Um, and this LED control you can turn on and off as well. And that's this color LED up here. It's a little difficult to see, but uh, I can cycle that on and off. Um, and so yeah, that is how you can talk to the uh, CC3220 board wirelessly. Um, I think that's pretty much it. And so we can also actually do this from the iOS device as well. Uh, if we go to that same um, IP address and type go, then we can start communications with the board and um, we can get that same information going back and forth. So uh, let's see, we can turn the LED on and off from the uh, board or from the iPhone. And then we can also move the board and change what is being displayed on the iPhone. So. Uh, yeah, this is a, a pretty neat dev board, and um, this is how you go about provisioning the board and getting some software up and running.